All right, everybody, we are here at the finish line at last. One more game to go, and it's going to determine the title of NWL champion at the 2023 Canadian Scrabble Classic. If we jump over to the standings, we will see that Josh and Jackson are both at 16 wins, so the winner of this game is going to win this event. Um, but yeah, we've got for all the marbles, Jackson versus Josh, really a storied rivalry uh, in the competitive Scrabble community. These two players sort of rising up the ranks more or less in tandem over the last decade. Um, and uh, really, really excited to watch this climactic showdown. Um, so the players appear to be ready to rock. So maybe we'll just cut over to the board and see how this final game plays out. So we have exciting matches all across the board, but we're gonna bring you the premier one right here between two young superstars of the game and close friends. And Josh will get the advantage of going first. Yeah, in that Division B where you have some of the, you know, newcomers to the game or, you know, not players at this absolute crazy level of skill, sort of, uh, you know, players that are, you know, a little bit more attainable in terms of, you know, they're playing Scrabble at a really high level. Um, oh, man, look at that. I I wanted to make a point, but Josh with that first blank there, that is just what he wants to see to start this game off, Jared. Jeez. If he doesn't have a bingo, he's probably going to spend some time on this turn and maybe eventually play Grok, leaving the very strong leave of AS blank. But we know he's going to really take some time to make sure he's not missing anything here. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Grok is definitely a great play as long as you can quickly dismiss the idea that you might have a bingo here. And Josh, to his credit, he struggled in the previous game with his time management on those blank racks, but he has very quickly made the correct decision of playing Grok and uh, dismissing that bingo idea very fast. So well done. Only a minute and uh, 23 seconds off the clock to make that decision. Yeah, and oh, he draws the second blank. Uh, wow. Whereas Jackson is just looking at some very difficult tiles, but just one vowel and too many clunkers. The FGCM. Uh, yeah, that's tough. Um, certainly, <laughs> I should close the prediction poll now. Uh, <laughs> let's see, how do I do that? I'm not even sure. Um, either way, um, late comers to the prediction poll might be well served to, uh, okay, I'm ending now. There we go. So I think, uh, because that's pretty, you're cooking the books. If you waited to, to bet until you saw the two blanks show up on Josh's rack there. Um, but he is for sure being going next turn, almost no matter what Jackson plays. And it, as you say, Jared, hard to think of a play that Jackson's going to feel good about here. He's looking at defog, but none of those tiles would hit multiplier square. So that would be a very limited score. Um, he understands that and just realizes that somehow he's going to get off, have to get off some heavy tiles. And the better way to do that is just to exchange five, which he has here. So ED is a strong leave. So maybe if he draws well, he can stay right in this game after Josh's bingo. Yeah, critical draw coming up for Jackson as Josh has started out with an 18-point play and is going to follow it up with, uh, I'm sure, some kind of decent scoring bingo here. Something in the 70 range for sure. Hooking Grox is likely to come down, so we'll just have to see. And what has Jackson drawn here? I'm looking for maybe eight-letter words that he might have here. Not seeing them yet, but maybe you guys in the chat have spied some. Yeah, the chat has been looking more for Josh's bingos. Um, I see Charles Sidonix suggesting Damsels or Miladies, while... Mo Green, our favorite commentator, has found Damocell, which would put that M on the triple letter score. So a couple of nice options there from our chat. Yeah, for sure. Like those choices. Um, I certainly think that if you can avoid placing an E on the board here, or at least with Damocell, if you can imagine that obscure word, D-A-M-O-S-E, 
E-L. Uh, by pluralizing Grox, that E isn't really out in space, but with a play like Sampled or something like that, um, with Grox, an E would be just hanging out there, nice and easy to hit. And I do think this is a really good idea by Josh to play Miladies here, um, not placing an E on the board and scoring the maximum number of points that he can here. Yeah, that's tough for Jackson to swallow. He already did, had to exchange on turn one, and now he sees a bingo come down, putting him down 96 points, and he still has to figure out what to do with this rack that just doesn't quite hit bingos. Yeah, um, tough start for Jackson, great start for Josh. He's up 100. Jackson has not yet put a play onto the board, uh, and obviously Scrabble has that element to it where – when a Scrabble game, when a Scrabble tournament, I should say, comes down to one game, uh, it feels a little bit unfair sometimes because anything can happen in an individual game of Scrabble. You really do need a larger sample size to to establish um, the caliber of play at a tournament. But uh, boy, is it exciting for us to watch that decisive game! As wow, what's Josh drawn here? Uh, three T's, but I guess the larger sample size is the the previous games. These players have had a chance to win more, and if they leave it down to one game to decide things, then that's um, that will allow for the variance to take over. And both players understand this, being such veterans of the tournament scene, despite their young age. Totally agreed. Um... So, yeah, Josh threatening a Q play on top of Miladies that feels like it's very, very unlikely to remain available after Jackson's next play. Certainly feels like he is a, very likely to play something underlapping Miladies um, or maybe even through the L of Miladies, something like Bolide leaving I-N with that nice G to hit of Grox could be another reasonable choice. Yeah. I know Jackson in this situation is going to think not just about this turn and not just about uh, what tiles he's leaving to go for a bingo, but to think about the board shape he's creating. He knows he's down 96. He knows Josh is going to try and start obstructing things. and He's going to want to make plays that will lead to longer turn uh, openings. And that's exactly why I think he went with a, a word like bolide here. I do like this choice for him. Um, just playing through that L um, creates a couple of new threats for Josh that are going to be kind of tough to block at once. Not impossible. A parallel play alongside bolide through, in particular, the A might end up blocking a lot of space and oh boy that's a pretty good option for josh there um great job by him to score very well with that cue yep but i'm seeing a bingo for jackson coming back so this game all of a sudden is going to be a lot closer um we can't see his tiles here but i'll tell you they are uh g i i n v r w wow um Oh, is Wivering not good? I'm seeing uh, question marks from... Oh, yeah. No, I don't think so. I was sort of listening along with you. Oh, and I... You told me that last letter. I was surprised. Wivering is a noun uh, per Stephen A17. Yeah. So excuse me, everyone. I, I got ahead of myself. So hopefully for Jackson's sake, he doesn't try that because... Uh, well. I was on mind meld with him last game when he played bunties and I for sure thought that was a word. Uh, hopefully, as you say, um, <laughs> and it looks like uh, Josh, maybe with a coded message to me, um, telling me uh, about my cat, whose name, as those who watch my streams may know, is Fitz. Um, so maybe he's trying to uh, shout out my cat with that placement of his tiles there. We'll have to ask him, win or lose, we'll have to ask Josh what he was thinking on that uh, move with his letters there. But uh, I guess viewing seems reasonable, or maybe, Jared, do you think he would just play view and keep the ING combination? Not sure necessarily where that will play. Uh, it looks like that's what he has set up. Um, I... I think he's just playing view. I think I would be more likely to play viewing. 
but both blanks are gone. So playing longer going for the blanks, maybe not so good. He wants to bingo for sure. So he likes that R-I-N-G idea. There's also um, parallel plays next to the Q of Kanat where he could go down that way, but those wouldn't leave as strong of a leave. So um, he could play something like Virgin there. Ooh, that is pretty good. That's a nice scoring play. Um, viewing is as well scoring. Um, both of those plays score 30 points viewing, leaving an R and Virgin leaving a W, which I think at this score, Jackson will for sure want to keep that R, but instead he just plays view for 20 leaving the R I N G combination. Um, I think that's perfectly defensible at the same time, you know, as you say, Jared, the blanks are gone. So you can't necessarily, you know, play a ton of tiles and push for them. I, I just don't know where that ING suffix is that lucrative here. As we see Josh immediately respond with zit and chi and bat, which is a huge scoring play for him. Things looking great for Josh. Yeah, I think I would have preferred uh, one of the longer options scoring 30, but I do understand what he was going for. And if he didn't duplicate his R's here, he was very close to getting a bingo down. Um, so definitely uh, a reasonable decision, but it allowed Josh to parallel that cue himself, get his head down for a big play. And the lead so early in the game is commanding. He's already up about two bingos. Both blanks are gone. And again, Jackson's just looking at a rack that's not quite what he needs it to be. Is he seriously contemplating playing out ring from the O of Grox, making a gigantic S hook that he does not have? It looks like, it, I mean, in this situation, he's down by 140 incredibly early in this game. Is that actually crossing his mind? And Jared, do you think that this situation where you must win this game to win the tournament, does that warrant a crazy play like this? I think so. I like it. I Someone said it's a content play. I don't think so. I think it's the right play. What else is he supposed to do there? He needs to make it difficult. Remember Josh came on the stream after his last win and said how jo Jackson from behind was really making – difficult plays that he had to address. Well, this is another one, and he gets six chances here to draw one of the three remaining S's. So let's let's see. That is uh, obviously you guys in the chat, just like we are, are rejoicing at the volatility and the insanity that uh, this play is going to bring about in this game. Uh, of course, I've already seen 14 Domino point out in the chat that thereof through the R of Outring is a really strong counter by Josh to this opening. Uh, a double double, not a bingo, but still scoring 50 plus points in that spot through the R of Outring. Let's see if he spots it here. And another really important thing about playing thereof is it would play six tiles, giving Josh six chances to go for one of those three remaining S's. Josh knows that Jackson didn't keep an S uh, or else he would have just bingoed on his last turn. So he knows that Jackson had seven chances to get an S. So he's going to really want to give himself many chances to get that key tile. I guess if he does not see thereof, maybe he'll be tempted to play Fogey or something through the G of Outring in an attempt to block a little bit it's not really that strong of an attempt to block. It's still pretty easy to overlap a play like that with something like ERS or um, I don't know. Um, it even might backfire sometimes and give your give your opponent an opportunity to play a bingo to the triple that does not contain an S, which would really be disappointing. Um, so I wonder, is Josh going to have it? I mean, first, he has to see thereof. If he doesn't see that, what is he going to do to address this massive S-hook that Jackson has so cleverly placed at that right edge of the board? He could play Fogey there, putting the F and the Y on the triple letter scores. Um, but I think he's going to find thereof. People have talked about how Josh's word knowledge might not always be there. He obviously knows this word, but he's also been very consistent, especially on stream at finding words. We've seen... Benin, we've seen Uglify, and uh, 
many more plays that a lot of players could miss, and Josh has been very consistent so far in finding them. So it, this isn't a, a needed play with his 130-point lead, but I, I have a lot of hopes that he's going to come up with this one. I agree. Um, I guess it's a little... The only thing that concerns me is that he certainly would play this if he spotted it pretty quickly, I think. So every every second that ticks off that clock that he hasn't seen this play, I worry a little bit more that maybe it's going to escape his notice. But um, let's see. He has. He just came in after his previous game. And uh, just a question in the chat, what happened in the previous game? Josh uh, was able oh. to... Yeah, he was able to force this decisive game. And there is Foggy Jared. Okay, so the risk about this, of course, is that now Jax can bingo up or down. It it sort of obstructs S plays, but not all that overly. So even though I suggested it, there's definitely a lot of downsides to it. Jackson's probably going to look uh, to open maybe even another spot to really keep the... Oh, wait, I also see Refrain as a double-double. So I think that might come down. Oh, that's nice. That gets a solid number of points there. So, um, yeah, refrain. Certainly, jo I mean, sorry, Jackson needs as many points as he can get. And the scary thing now for Josh about Foggy is just that that, of course, blocks the S hook, but does create two nice bingo lines that, unless you have an S of your own, cannot both be blocked at once. So playing refrain looks like it kind of closes the board down. But now, as long as Josh doesn't draw an S, the board has some cool opportunities if Jackson's able to draw something. Yeah, and the S is so important, especially if refrain comes down, because that would be another word that could be hit with an S. Um, and he is playing it. So I think that's 40 points by my math, 4, 7, 9, uh, maybe 36 it's 40. You're right. 40. So okay. I had it right the first time. Yep. A solid 40 pointer here. Um, still, I mean, Jackson down by over a hundred, but, uh, his draw here is so pivotal. It's unfortunate for him with both of the blanks gone that he can't get help there, but maybe he will draw something really, really important. He needs a bingo ASAP. It's looking pretty good. Ooh, not Ooh. quite that last that last eye. I, I don't think he has anything here. If I'm wrong, you guys should obviously shout it out. But uh, he seemed like he had some good bingo tiles. The second eye took him a little further away. Yeah, like ionical is something someone might look at, but that wouldn't be a word. It would just be ionic. Uh, if there was an R, we'd see ironical, but he doesn't have that either. We keep seeing how... Pivotal, a bit of luck, a bit of variance is in this game. That last tile always seems so important. I know in the tournament when you're drawing, you're always feeling pretty good until that last tile. And some players just take an extra second to look at it because they know that that tile can often mean the difference between a win and a loss. We saw that with Chris Sykes. Um, did you did you just yeah. note that? I didn't say it, but I do remember it from yesterday. Okay, sorry if I yeah I didn't want to repeat myself unnecessarily, um, but uh, yeah, Chris Sykes was doing that, turning one of his tiles around to see if maybe he could uh, perform some kind of uh, magic trick and convert that last tile into whatever would give him a bingo. Um, so yeah, for Josh here, he has. I understand the impulse to block the S hook of out ring a little bit with Foggy, but man, those two separate sevens lanes. Now he's going to block one with Hued. This makes some sense just to sort of, you know, sew that area up. Now it's worth noting that this same word would have played parallel to refrain for 31 points. So he has sacrificed quite a few points to block that lane conclusively here. Do you like that choice, Jared? Absolutely. I think that's a pretty easy decision. That out ring spot, he could get hit for a bingo for 120 points, let's say. So no doubt in my mind with the deficit, the margin of a lead he has here, he had to take out that spot. Um, Jackson now has a couple six-letter plays he could make from 
uh, next to the Y, down to the triple score, the Oil Can or Al Nico. And I think he's going to play one of them, probably the one that he thinks will give him the best chances to bingo towards on subsequent turns. I totally agree, Jared. And I feel like that type of point sacrifice with the huge positioning makes a ton of sense here, given the scary worst case scenario avoidance that Josh needs to perform here. And I also agree that Jackson is very likely, even though you kind of have this instinct where you want to slow the game down and try not to use quite so many tiles in this particular position. Um, Alnico, nevertheless, or you know, whatever oil can or Alnico in that corner feels like it's a fair number of points and puts some decent letters to bingo to uh, out in space. But it looks like Jackson might be getting ready to play Chow instead. I actually don't even see. Oh, maybe he Next wants to the to age of feud, uh, feud going yeah. upwards. The point there is that because Jack's, uh, Josh forked that board for both the upper right and the lower right to be open, now it allows Jackson to make another play to open the top right, leaving that bottom right open. And the point is for him to really go for a big bingo, not just any bingo, but he wants to leave that bottom right lane open, and he also wants to create a second lane that Josh is going to have to address. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense that uh, he would be thinking about that. Now he's shifted to a different possibility of Konai. I think he's probably wanting to play that word with Zig, putting the I, inserting the I right in between that Z and G. That's Very an, clever. Interesting, an interesting choice to kind of create more space. He's a event. Okay, he is settling on Chow after all. Um, a lot of a lot of choices there to pick from, Jared. Yeah, like Coney was nice because it put the C, which is hard to be overlapped, um, out in space, which was going to leave the lanes open longer turn. I think he liked putting this in the triple triple lane, sort of forcing Josh's hand here. Um, let's see if Jackson finally draws that S. He also drew the X, and there's still that X bomb available next to the I and refrain. So Jackson is not out of this game yet, that's for sure. Josh with his abundance of E's. I think he had entree and then another E after that. He plays erect in the upper right corner of the board. Um, that seems okay. Um, obviously, he had other plays like entree in the lower right of the board. But again, just as with Hude, you have to block the C here. You must play through the C. There's no reason to leave that open and risk a massive play through the C that could cost you the game and the tournament. Yeah, so Jackson's going to play tax, which makes more sense than the XI I saw originally because of the strength of the SLING leave here. The one thing with this leave, however, is that Josh is very likely to block in the bottom right, and Bingo's ending in G are not going to fit beneath erect. It's possible they could go beneath bolides, depending on what he draws. Um, but instead, he'd waited so long for an S, and he drew a second one when he really wanted a vowel. All good points there. Um, boy, um, Jackson almost with smilings on his rack. Uh, as limbness? Jackson. No. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I was just no, referring I don't like that. to... Yeah, I don't like that as a word. I was just referring to the fact that uh, Jackson Smiley almost oh. with a smiling word. Oh, here it comes. Glimness. Yeah. Wow. This so is, I uh, saw it right away. I also didn't like it, it, but I saw it as feasible. I've just checked. It is not good. Uh, I think Josh is going to challenge here just because it's high prob. He's already shaking his head. I think he'll write down the alphagram, look it over, and I expect to see a challenge within about... 40 seconds. That's my prediction. Yeah, I would be stunned to see Josh leave this. We've made a couple comments about his word knowledge, um, but it actually is more than good enough to make a challenge in this scenario. I feel like Josh will trust his instinct here, even with the game situation being what it is. Um, and knowing that a failed challenge would be incredibly costly, but uh, I think Jackson is just courtesy drawing. I really think he's very likely still on hold here. 
Yeah, uh, Josh is, I think, counting the tiles, which is smart. He's trying to figure out how many more turns Jackson can get uh, to figure out how many bingos he could possibly get down to catch up in this game. He's still shaking his head. He doesn't like the word. Uh, and if he's able to pull the trigger on the challenge, it's basically going to seal his tournament here. So a lot of pressure on Josh, but we do have some hope that he is going to pull this challenge trigger. Yeah. Um, he's still doing okay on his clock, unlike last game where he really ran it down quite a bit. So he has some time to think about this. He's nodding his head yes now. Is he really going to allow this to stay on the board? Um, you know, the game situation definitely dictates that you you have to be absolutely a thousand percent sure because losing a challenge is really the best way to lose your grip on this game. I definitely think that uh, allowing this play to go through, he's still in very firm control of the game. But uh, that 163 for Jackson will go up quite a bit if you allow Glimness to stay. And it would basically be one more bingo. And Jackson's Ooh. right there on your heels. So he plays Rally. And a great point by Kenji. Nice to see him in the chat. That it takes the E back hook. So this is suddenly yeah. giving a bit of a path for Jackson back into this game. Surprising. Um, so we give... Jackson, his points, after all, for Glimness, which, again, you were saying it, Jared, Jackson, among the most creative players out there to find his way back into these seemingly lost games. Yeah, like maybe he could have played Army and just kept the scoring pressure on, putting that Y in the double letter score and hitting the triple, but that wouldn't have had a very nice leave, L-L-A-N. Um now, looking at what Josh has, it's some pretty ugly tiles. So it does give Jackson a bit of a glimmer of hope. He has VI set up on the left side of his rack now. He tends to set up words there. So perhaps he's looking at Vim just in the top middle of the board. Could be Vim. Uh, another idea would just be to play comp up there. Um, that's kind of intriguing just because maybe you can somehow draw a bingo ending in C at some point in the game with your eyes. You also are, as you said, gunning for the E hook on rally. So there is comp. I think this is a reasonable choice. Um, the game is really close to its conclusion here though. So uh, the, the draw that Jackson gets here is going to be pretty huge. But Josh is really going to be struggling to score many points and address any of the new openings with this weird, Ooh. imbalanced rack. The T was a nice tile for him, but those O's are not looking at Jackson's draw. So True. even though he's now pulled within a bingo before Josh's next play, um, that draw is going to be quite the killer for him. Yeah, time is too tight to have a draw like that for Jackson here. Um, so you can see the score, though, has to be giving Josh a bit of a of fear here. Um, I think I have the tracking updated. If we want to show Josh's POV here, what is he looking at? You can see there is an S. I don't know whether he's thinking about the E hook on rally. I feel like maybe he's not, or he might not have played that word there, Jared. Yeah, I don't think he would have played it if he saw the E potential, because you can give up a very easy 80 plus point bingo there. So it's possible he's overlooking it. And Jackson might have already seen it and have factored that into his decision. When you look at the pool from Josh's perspective, there's a lot of nice tiles there. Cut three E's, two A's. P R S T T I I really just the V's ugly. The J would help Josh for scoring. It wouldn't help Jackson for bingoing, but there's a lot of good tiles out there. Um, despite neither player looking at a very attractive rack. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's definitely, so we know the truth that Jackson's rack is weak, but from Josh's POV, not the case, right? He's definitely feeling some pressure here in this clinching game decisive game to determine this year's champion uh definitely 
uh, <laughs> I can feel his pressure secondhand a little bit at this stage in the game. This would be an, a devastating game to lose. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see that Josh um, is taking his time here because there's no obvious play. Like, he should be scared of Bingo's to the sea. He should be scared of the e-hook he might not see. And he also is going to be scared of having too many vowels on his next turn. So he'll want to look for a play that will get rid of at least one of the ends as well as multiple vowels if possible. Yeah, you guys are pointing out a cool option of Mauve down in that lower left, scoring 20 points. The scary thing about that, though, is that you just can't really put that big S hook on the board here. It's just terrifying to imagine there's plenty of bingos starting with an S in the unseen pool that Jackson could have. So I really would be terrified um to place that on the board and instead we see the play of anoa there making uh taxa i think that's pretty yeah. good i like it no one had seen that one but um even though he left both ends he managed to get rid of three of his five vowels that'll be helpful for his flexibility going forward and he's just drawn a t an h and an s so great draw um, oh. And that'll put him in a comfortable position with Jackson's terrible rack here. That S is so huge. It's just going to allow him to potentially, if he wants, he can make setups of his own somewhere. Now a play like the aforementioned Mauve, which of course he doesn't have anymore. He just used the two A's. But any play for Josh that creates an S hook is not only no longer a threat, it greatly favors him going forward in this game. So I'm not 100% sure if there is such a play, but if there were, he would not hesitate to make it here. It also means that if a bingo comes down forming rally with the E at the end, Josh could then pluralize that by putting the S there and hopefully also go over towards the left for even more points. So wow. that is a Great big draw. Point. Great point. So maybe here it's possible if he wants to play something setting up that massive e-hook, he could do that here. Uh, that's a really interesting choice. He just has to be careful not to empty the bag, but anything like that would be pretty devastating here. Um, Jackson seems to be holding the I and V, perhaps for just IV, but um, I don't know if that's going to lead to enough points even if he were to draw into any sort of bingo he wants i wonder what potential bingos he could hit to the c if there are any yeah he's probably thinking about that um if i'm jackson here i'm definitely thinking that maybe i can gamble that josh will not be thinking of the e-hook on rally um so how can i do something that sort of takes some pressure because otherwise josh is going to consider trying to block that why some of the time right you have to do something that's like a fake out um and the, my problem with ivy is that placing the v there really does block it off conclusively i wish there were a play that jackson could make that would sort of take some of the emphasis off of the why uh, and maybe catch Josh off guard with the e-hook. I agree. Because uh, without a mistake by Josh, Jackson's probably in a lot of trouble. So if he could dump the O and the I, like perhaps forming Zig, he might be able to just uh, draw into something. I I sort of forget the tile pool, but he's going to have to hope that he, he hit something big. And... Now he's lining up voice, maybe, which wouldn't seem to do enough. Yeah, I worry about that one. I mean, obviously, Jackson is fully aware of this, but he's definitely wishing that he had a play that left that C open as a threat. So, uh, like I said, I just worry a bit that if he plays something like voice, Josh is going to be able to block off the lower right of the board, and then it's hard to see what Jackson is actually going to draw into. Maybe there's a bingo or two 
to the M of Miladies. That doesn't seem very likely. Yeah, this is a tough sled in here for Jackson, but you can see he has the score slip in his hand. What he's doing is he's looking at the pool that we had pulled up for you earlier to see the potential tiles that either Josh has or that are in the bag that he could draw himself. Um, and he's just trying to come up with desperate scenarios. It's it's difficult. Uh, the best play I still see is OI, but if in the chat you guys see anything more creative, we'd love to hear it. Oh, and G.I. Joel points out he wasn't setting up voice. He was setting up bogey. That would make a lot yeah. more sense because it scores yeah. a lot more. Bogey scores quite a bit more. And Jackson definitely is in a position where points matter. You need to score enough points on this play that if you do connect with some kind of miraculous bingo, it scores enough to actually outrun Josh. You can't just bingo. You have to try to win the game. So voice would just score so few. Vogi getting a bunch more points, every one of those counting. Yeah, and a great suggestion from Kenji on a previous turn, instead of uh, the play of tax, it could have been axon setting up the T for Taxon. So Axe would have gone above Miladies, Axon. Um, so keeping lanes open as you're trying to claw back can be very important. Oh, very interesting choice. So a little bit of a sacrifice on the scoreboard, but important space getting opened by a play like that. Pretty cool idea. Um, but after this play of Vogie, just look at the score. It's only a 42-point game. It seems like any... Bingo for Jackson, who, of course, just drew, drew the J. Absolutely not what he was hoping to see there. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a tough situation again for Josh. But unbeknownst to him, he is in very, very good shape here. Yeah, I mentioned how it was Josh who wouldn't mind seeing the J because with his lead, he wants to just continue adding the scoring pressure, whereas Jackson, with his deficit, really needs the bingo. So... The J was the one tile that wasn't really going to favor him here. He was very close to drawing into a bingo like routine and a rally that could really help him rally back into this game. I wonder if there's any kind of like, what is the possible fish? If Josh doesn't empty the bag, is there anything that he can fish for? Any kind of sneaky non bingo J play hooking rally? That he can go for here i'm just trying to rack my brains for like what could possibly be that pathway for jackson here right like a, a six letter word starting with j and ending with e would be pretty scary in the end game uh another great suggestion from the aptly named strategy just for josh to drop an n uh beneath the eye of view for in because he's holding the other end to make in like a little chalet or something, and an S to hook into in. So um, very creative option there. How many are in the pool, Will? That would really help us make a decision here. There's three. We can cut to that. It should be accurate. So from Josh's POV, you can see this is all correct. This is what he's looking at here. So three tiles in the bag. The J definitely going to be a focus for Josh, but also... The fact that there are a few seven-letter words lurking that you have to be careful um, not to, to give back here. I guess there is a possibility from Josh's POV of something like operate and rally with that e-hook here to worry about. Um, that would certainly be a devastating uh, play to see come down. So... It's tough because like, Bogey took away the potential bingos to the C if there were any. I I didn't have Jackson's tracking to see like maybe something like operatic. I don't know what he could have fished for, but now the his biggest chance has to be on Josh missing this rally hook. If he doesn't see it, maybe he doesn't realize that um, Jackson could potentially bingo out. But that J is such a killer for uh, Jackson here. Yeah, I think Josh is getting ready to play Hin through the eye, the first eye of Miladies, scoring quite well and leaving one tile in the bag. That definitely looks like a solid option for him, regardless of whether he sees Rally or not, just because any kind of one tile fish by Jackson should create a scenario where Josh 
can respond pretty effectively to whatever bingo Jackson draws. And also, if Jackson wants to go ahead and bingo immediately after Josh's play of Hin, he should be able to respond pretty effectively with that nice, balanced ENSTU combination, at least just by slapping down rallies if he sees it. Again, we just don't know, and we won't know um, until we either see a play down there or ask him after the game. Yeah, and Jackson... Um... If he fishes off just the J, he'd really want that N for routine, but both ends are on Josh's rack. So that fish, I'm not seeing what else one tile he could draw from there, the consonants being J, P, R, T. Um, and some of those are on his rack. So the P is sort of the outstanding consonant, and Powdier doesn't look like it would fit. So um, difficult position here for Jackson. Yeah, very much so. That's why I was definitely thinking maybe his best chance would be to fish for a J play hooking rally. I'm I'm looking and looking, and I just don't know what that would be here. Um, have to be a six letter word with a J on that triple letter score that to really give Josh a fright in this end game. But uh, if you guys see that out there in the chat, let me know as uh, Josh draws that P. Yeah, and Kenji's bringing up a good point, how you don't really want to make that fish that I misattributed to him as IN. That was actually Morris's su suggestion. Uh, Josh in the lead wants to keep the scoring pressure. He doesn't want to rely on a fish that he's not, uh, or a setup that he's not necessarily going to hit. But he has now made his play. There's one in the bag. Um, and... He's going to have to drop his J probably because there's just no, unless there's a J bingo, he could maybe hit. Um, but once he empties, Josh is going to have full knowledge. And unless he's missed that rally spot, um, I just don't see any pathway to victory for Jackson here. I'm struggling too. Um, if anybody can come up with something, Jackson is a great candidate to do so. Um, there is only one tile in the bag, which complicates matters quite a bit. Um, I really feel like for me, as I keep saying, the most logical thing would be to completely bank on a miss of the e-hook on Rally, but I just can't find a fish that actually connects there. What if he plays like Jury and then looks to underlap it with his O towards Rally with the E? It might not still be enough. Uh, it's the best idea I have at the moment, I'd still be looking and using more of my clock here. Yeah, um, that's a pretty good point. Um, again, the scoreboard is just, if it were just a little bit closer, I would love that. And it looks like Jackson might be considering that exact thing. I wonder if there is, I'm just trying to look at the tiles to come, which basically are on Josh's rack, but there's also an A, so peanuts are in the bag with an extra E. Uh, let's hope mm -hmm. not literal peanuts. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just not seeing any of those draws for Jackson that actually no. go out in that spot. So looking like Josh is right on the precipice here. We called him in, and he stopped by after his previous round's victory against Jackson, and he was pretty adamantly refusing to accept any praise, any kudos for his performance at all. But uh, he has been on quite the tear lately, winning a lot of multi-day events one after the other, and he is right on the cusp of winning yet another prestigious tournament right here. Yeah, um, you know, Josh had been very vocal online talking about how he was in a difficult li living situation with his upstairs neighbor being very loud and really interfering with his sleep. And he's since moved to a new place and he's much happier there. And I told him that once he was settled, I expected his uh, string of poor performance turn around and they really have. I It just shows you how important it's good sleep and overall happiness and wellness is to performance in a game like Scrabble. Yeah, look at this. This is a good idea. The J just plopping that down, probably going for the N for routine and rally 
maybe surprising Josh here. That looked like a pretty cool idea. And I wonder if Jackson is going to play something with rally now that Josh has cashed his S just to kind of rub it in that, Hey, you might've missed this big play here. <laughs> um, Spiel might also have just been a good play, Jared. I'm not sure. Yeah. It I'm scores excited. a lot and it'll leave tiles that he can go out with next turn. And yeah. not only is Josh going to win this tournament, but he's going to go back over 2000 for the first time in uh, quite a while, and that's such a big milestone. I remember how happy he was for me when I went over it for my first time. He was the first one to come over and celebrate, and now I get to be the first one to congratulate him on this huge achievement. Well, you just barely beat me to it, Jared. You set Scrabble history earlier by being the first player to sign up to a Scrabble <laughs> tournament via a live stream and more more records set by Jared being the first to congratulate Josh Sokol on this impending win here that he is about to notch. I'm sure that we will hear from him after the game and maybe Jackson too as they talk about this. But uh, very, very impressive performance by both of these players that we've seen over the course of the event. Uh, it's been amazing to watch these games here and really just want to shout out a huge thank you to the almost 200 uh, viewers that are watching along with us right now. And while we have the chance, why don't we talk about a few of Josh's big wins? I know he won recently in Atlantic City. Uh, before that, he also won in New Orleans. That's right. That's true. Yeah. So this is going to be the third in that series wow. of multi-day events that he's won in a row. That is not easy to do, no matter how well you draw. And uh, it's pretty impressive that he's been able to to pull off all of these wins. And uh, yeah, we should definitely also shout out, I need to head on over to the Twitch channel to do this. But, uh, you know, for those of you that are curious, Josh is also a Twitch streamer in his own right. And I definitely recommend heading on over to his channel and tossing him a follow because you will probably get to hear him talk a little bit about some of these games as well as a couple of plays hit the board there to finish this game off. Yeah, and you can also follow Will on Twitch, Wanderer15. Uh, strategy popped into the chat. He hasn't streamed recently, but he's definitely someone to follow so that when he does stream next, he'll be there uh, to catch his game. So a big win here for Josh. Congratulations to him.